welcome to the North American Invasive Species Management Association's uh, special event webinar today. So very excited to be here. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Elizabeth Brown, and I serve as the Professional Development Legislative Affairs and Certified Weed-Free Products Program Manager here at NASMA. Uh, really super excited for today's event and grateful for our speakers to be here with us today. Uh, today you get to learn all about Play Clean Go Awareness Week and how to integrate the new outreach tools. Uh, we are one month out from Play Clean Go Awareness Week, so this is a really outstanding opportunity uh, to learn what's available and to get your plans in place to have a great week in June. So before we get to the main event, I'd like to share just a few things about NASMA with you for those of you that don't know us well. So here at NASMA, our mission is to support, promote, and empower invasive species prevention and management in North America. A little bit about what we do uh, here at NASMA, we are the stewards of international standards. Uh, we have a mapping standard and of course our certified weed-free products program which holds standards for weed-free forage, gravel, and now mulch. Uh, education and advocacy is a large role that we play here at NASMA. Uh, just in two weeks, 10 days, we're kicking off uh, the second National Invasive Species Awareness Week. Uh, we have daily webinars, an online resource toolkit, a new event map, please check it out at nisaw.org, N-I-S-A-W.org. Uh, outreach and awareness, another huge part of what we do. And today you're gonna learn all about um, our international campaign, Play Clean Go. So I'm not even gonna talk about that because that's the focus today. But of course, those dates are June 6th through 12th and just you wanna bookmark playcleango.org so you have easy access to that website. Uh, and finally, near and dear to my heart is our professional development program. We have a certified invasive species manager course. Uh, we're kicking off the summer semester next month and it's um, going to be a really special semester, uh, our last semester with our professor. So really excited for that and we are going to move on to a pretty cool new thing this fall. So stay tuned for more information about that. Uh, we also have webinars and trainings and of course our annual conference. Uh, which is going to be September 27th through 30th in Missoula, Montana, uh, co-hosted with the Montana Invasive Species Council. We will have live options, virtual options. Uh, you do not want to miss this event. Uh, it's going to be great. I hope I get to see you in person there, but if not online, so please save the date. Uh, if you are not a NASMA member, I encourage you to please visit our website, nasma.org. We have three individual membership options for you to consider, and the benefits are huge, tons of things available to you as a member of NASMA and this outstanding community. For organizations and those that want to consider partnership opportunities, we have four partnership opportunities. Again, you can find those at nasma.org. And if you're interested in a custom partnership, uh, please reach out and we're happy to put something together for you and your organization. Okay, one of my favorite membership benefits is our first Friday's networking event. This is a members only event. Of course, we're holding it virtually. And this week it's on Friday. Yeah, first Friday of every month. So we are gonna be talking about invasive species and climate change. We hope that you will join us. This is really just, I get so much value out of these first Fridays. So I hope I see a lot of you there. Okay, so that kind of concludes my little introduction. Again, our mission is to support, promote, and empower invasive species prevention and management in North America. We are here for you. Please reach out and let us know if there's anything that we could ever do to help you or be of service to you. And with that, let's get on with the main event. Like I said, we have three outstanding speakers here for you today. Uh, really grateful and appreciative to have these wonderful ladies here with us. Uh, first up will be Krista Ludke, our program manager here at NASMA. Um, as the Play Clean Go program manager, Krista aims to include recreationists in the conservation of invasive species prevention and share easy ways anyone can become a land steward. 
Before becoming the Play Clean Go program manager, she served as conservationist with Door County Soil and Water Conservation Department, where she fostered multi-jurisdictional partnerships, the introduction of local invasive species policies and cost share programs, and provided invasive species education and outreach. After Krista, we'll hear from Kristen Pulzer. Uh, Kristen is the PR manager with Celtic and so excited to have her with us today. Um, versatile, results-driven public relations professional with experience developing and executing strategy for PR accounts, ranging from nonprofit associations like ours, uh, healthcare establishments, financial institutions, and law firms. External and internal communications experience includes account management, corporate communications, media and community relations, crisis communication, and event planning and management. Thank you so much for being here, Kristen. And then finally, we also have Amanda McKeown. Um, as a social media strategist with Celtic, Amanda creates social content and advertising for several unique brands, including Play Clean Go. Uh, previously, she's managed social profiles for three Fortune 500 companies and has worked with clients in a variety of industries, including tech, insurance, manufacturing, healthcare, and nonprofit. Amanda enjoys creating engaging content and is passionate about delivering measurable results for her clients. Okay, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Krista. Again, so excited for all the great stuff that we have coming up next month with Play Clean Go Awareness Week. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Great introduction, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you everyone for taking the time out to be with us today to learn about Play Clean Go Awareness Week and delve a little bit deeper into the different types of outreach that you and your organization can um, include in Play Clean Go Awareness Week. And before I get started on my presentation, I would love to take a minute to take a quick poll um, of the audience and see if you have heard of Play Clean Go. Oh, good. <laughs> well, um, so I believe that a majority of you here are probably going to get a, a nice little refresher on what Play Clean Go is, um, what we do for uh, recreationists, but then um, we'll really get into the marketing of the Play Clean Go program and Play Clean Go Awareness Week, which is um, really invaluable when it comes to the success of the program uh, with the assistance of Celtic and um, organizations like you guys that help us get the word out. So as we continue on, uh, here's a refresher on what Play Clean Go is. We are an education and outreach campaign for all outdoor recreationists. And we use community-based social marketing principles, which is essentially making these recreationists uh, accountable and holding them accountable for the role that they can help us play in preventing the spread of invasive species and introducing it into uh, new landscapes or new areas or even spreading them along the trails uh, or in their favorite outdoor space. Uh, we promote awareness, understanding, and cooperation, and then we provide a clear and consistent call to action. Um, consistent is gonna be key when it comes to Play Clean Go, and I'll get into that a little bit further down the line. So Play Clean Go uh, connects with what recreationists believe in value. Um, we believe that recreationists, however they enjoy the outdoors, really inherently want to do the right thing to protect their favorite places and outdoor spaces. And Play Clean Go shares how they can do that in a positive and engaging way. Play Clean Go also seeks to change the recreationist behavior by removing some perceived barriers. Uh, most of the time, recreationists either don't know that there's a problem or um, are on the other end of the spectrum and can feel a little overwhelmed and feel that they can't really help on such a large scale um, concern that we have with invasive species. And Play Clean Go helps to overcome that perceived barrier through high level um, education information on invasive species, making sure that it's digestible and easy to understand for the recreationists or for those who uh, like to delve a little bit deeper into invasive species world um, or, or uh, the natural world as a whole. Um, and we also like to provide the tools to help the recreationists prevent the spread. Um, and the tools are teaching them the prevention behaviors that we hope to see when they're out and about 
um, whether it be boot brush stations located at major trailheads, uh, encouraging them to have those handheld boot brushes along with them on every outdoor adventure that they go on, um, or uh, pulling off seeds and burrs from their pets. Uh, we share the, the really simple ways and the very quick and to the point um, steps that they can take to prevent the spread of invasive species. Perhaps one of the more important things of Play Clean Go is the consistent marketing across jurisdictional boundaries and continental boundaries. Um, it's really important that we have the same message, the same look, and the same feel of Play Clean Go wherever the recreationist um, is enjoying their time outdoors. And seeing that consistency will result in a behavioral change because eventually it's going to um, ring in their head that, oh, I remember seeing that diamond logo somewhere, or I remember hearing play clean go, and it's going to remind them to do the behavior before and after they enjoy the outdoors or their favorite space. So play clean go, uh, we really try to help all of our organizations and partners with the consistency piece of the for our recreationists. On nasma.org, we do have a free graphic media library for anybody to use. We have digital assets, we have infographics, and we also have posters, rack cards, and we've included the um, default sign of our boot brush stations. And that is the center piece on the lower um, portion of your screen. We have an English version and we just uploaded a Spanish version of this sign so that you can take this to your local printers and um, have this uh, information printed, developed and available to your recreationists whenever you have um, outreach events. We also on nasma.org have a Play Clean Go store or just the Nasma store where you can purchase a lot of these materials. If you don't have a local printer or you just wanna simplify the process, we have our handheld boot brushes available for you there. Some nine by 12 signs, watch out weed cards for those recreationists that wanna know a little bit beyond uh, just cleaning their gear. They wanna know what species may be in the area or what they're looking at. And we also have additional outreach tools really for you to help engage, the, engage that recreationist and help us keep the message of consistency for prevention of invasive species. And for those of you that are NASMA partners, the Play Clean Go Partner Graphic Library has now moved to nasma.org in the members area. And in the members area graphic library, you will see all of our digital assets that we create anytime we do um, social outreach. And you will also find um, some print ready materials and some stock imagery and iconography that you can use to help localize or personalize the materials that you create of Play Clean Go, again, for your outreach uh, opportunity events when you have an opportunity to do that. And of course, Play Clean Go is not possible without all of these major contributors and partners. And more importantly, um, or I shouldn't say that, but I feel more importantly, the local organizations like yourself, helping us get the word in your local area, in your uh, city, county, state, wherever you uh, reach organizations or recreationists on the ground and where they're recreating. So if you have any questions on Play Clean Go, how to get some of the materials, um, or have some uh, advice or requests, feel free to reach out to me at the email listed above or give me a call. I always love to talk on the phone during the Zoom uh, experience. It kind of breaks up <laughs> the day. Uh, but before I turn this over to Celtic, I do want to show everybody how to find the Play Clean Go tools. So if you go to playcleango.org, which you'll see has received a major overhaul, um, and this is done with the recreationist in mind, trying to keep it simple, uh, fun, engaging, and exciting. Uh, we have all of this information available. And just a, a request to anybody out there, if you do have some boot brush stations 
on your property in your organization, or if you see some, please verify it on this map or send me the, the Latin long of the boot brush station location because I would love to get this in our in interactive uh, boot brush station map so that all the recreationists can see where their local boot brush stations are located. So at playclingo.org, you'll see the Awareness Week and we have the toolkit available for you right here. And in the toolkit, we have a lot of uh, great information that should be ready for you to use. The six steps that we're gonna be focusing on for this Play Clean Go Awareness Week in both English and Spanish. We also have um, a broad overview of the toolkit, talking points for you. So if you have any uh, media, whether it be radio, uh, news media, or um, some local events, it gives you a really good use of some high level talking points that you can provide to those or to those groups. And then we also have a press release template that you can plug and play so that you can localize it to your area. These are all of the digital graphics that we have available for everyone to use freely. Just download this and upload it to your social media pages and you'll get a little more information on that in a little bit. And then we also have both English and Spanish for you available. And we do have the free graphic library at nasma.org that does have a few additional assets for you to select from, including an updated version of our very popular infographic that was created with one of our first Play Clean Go Awareness Weeks. So thank you all very much for being here and joining me today. And without further ado, I will introduce uh, Kristen Pulzer, who is the uh, PR maven that has been helping <laughs> us get the word out on Play Clean Go and Play Clean Go Awareness Week. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chris. I appreciate it. So um, as Krista and Elizabeth mentioned, I am Kristen Pulser. I'm the PR manager with Celtic. And um, Celtic is a marketing and communications agency. We're located in the, the good land of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, we've been around for more than, oops, excuse me, 25 years. We have a pretty diverse um, experience portfolio. We work with a lot of um, active lifestyle organizations and brands, travel, tourism, food and beverage, financial, manufacturing, uh, a lot more. So this is just, um, as I mentioned, we're a full service agency. So while um, I am PR and Amanda is here on behalf of our social media team, we also have creative, media planning, digital, um, etc. Here are just a sample of some of the brands that we work with. Um, we work with Victorinox. We have been working with Nesma for a little bit going on a year. Uh, this is our second uh, awareness week and we're pretty excited to kick it off starting in June. So the importance of PR and social media. Um, you know, I showed that I'm, I think everybody has a little bit of idea of what PR and social is, but PR and social media allow you to share your message and mission on a local, national, or global level to promote brand awareness and visibility drives traffic to your website and blog, which is something that is extremely important um, in today's society as we're all trying to create new leads. It helps to build communities, recruiting volunteers, engaging advocates, sharing resources, and ultimately inspiring action, inspiring somebody to get out there and help prevent the spread of invasive species. PR also helps to build and maintain brand reputation. It's an earned endorsement of your organization or cause. It's a third party endorsement, um, you know, helping you to build that brand reputation. Social media can be fast and cost effective and social media and PR work together um, as social media can augment and support PR efforts and serve as an amplifier. So why does PR matter? Formally, you know, the long firm description of PR is public relations is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their public. Really, PR is storytelling. We are creating a narrative to advance our agenda. We're trying to convince our audience to act, whether that be to purchase our product, support our position, attend our events. In this case, you know, it will be to take the Play Clean Go pledge and participate in Awareness Week. You can also use PR to protect, enhance, and build your reputation. It's important to remember that while public relations often refers to media relations, um, it's not just the media. It can be used to share consistent information with your internal audience, 
as well as support for government and grant outreach, which is something that is extremely important, um, specifically in the nonprofit world. So Krista had mentioned um, a little bit about the Play Can Go Awareness Week Toolkit that we have created. We value all of our partnerships and we wanna make it as easy as possible for you to support Play Can Go Awareness Week. That's why we have developed this toolkit. Later on in the presentation, Amanda will get into the social media tools um, in the toolkit, but I'm just gonna just cover the PR. So the PR toolkit includes the press release template, outreach ideas, and interview talking points. The press release. We at um, Play Clean Go will be distributing a Awareness Week press release nationally ahead of Play Clean Go Awareness Week. We have taken that release and um, customized it and made a template for our partners to essentially go into the release, make it their own, and distribute it locally. So if you go onto the website and you take a look, it's pretty easy to see kind of where to add in your information, your name, update the quotes. Um, once you update the release, we encourage you to distribute it to your local media outlets. Um, if somebody doesn't have experience kind of gathering up media contacts, where I recommend you start would be taking a look at your local TV station. So going to your NBC affiliate page and checking out um, their contact information, if they have any of the reporters listed. Sometimes the easiest place to go and the most effective place to go would be to the newsrooms so if they have a newsroom at nbc.com that's the place to start um, you can also you know search on their website to see what types of stories have been written about your organization or play clean go or maybe you have a past relationship with somebody that you could capitalize on we also recommend sending it to your daily newspaper your top outlets your newspapers broadcast um, specifically your npr affiliate news talk radio and then if you're hosting an event, if you have something going on during Play Clean Go Awareness Week, I definitely encourage you to reach out to the photojournalist from your daily paper. Photojournalists are always, always, always looking for something fun and visual to share with their readers. So once you've updated the press release, it's time to send it out. And once we have our media list together, we have to draft what we're gonna say. Reporters receive hundreds of pitches every single day. So we want to do our best to get their attention. We want to be creative. We want to know who we're reaching out to. So I recommend to do your research and be as sure as you can that you're contacting the right reporter for your organization. Um, typically what I would recommend is if you are going to reach, if you are going to contact a reporter directly, know what they've written. Take a look at the last three articles that they have put out um see if there's something that you can reference in your pitch from there i would develop a personalized pitch that is very specific to the outlet and to their audience um, keep it short and to the point so what you can do is you can include that pitch ahead of your press release you could send them the press release and then follow up with the pitch it's also important to remember don't be afraid to follow up with a phone call um, we all get tons of email every day, it's very easy for something to kind of get lost in the mix. And so it is appropriate to outreach via phone as well. If your organization is on social media, it's a really good opportunity to follow your reporters and those outlets on social media and engage with them as appropriate. Also monitor the media to see what's being reported on and what the trends are in your marketplace. I recommend going in and creating Google alerts of keywords so that if there's a specific topic that comes up, you're going to get an alert that somebody has written about it. And that's your opportunity to reach out to them and offer your expertise as a thought leader and subject matter expert. Now we've pitched, we've secured an interview. People are really excited to talk like Bingo Awareness Week with us. We have developed talking points to keep everybody on track. So these talking points that are in the toolkit are essentially our Awareness Week elevator speech. So it's who we are, what we want people to do, and where they can go to do that. The talking points are designed to be a set of clear, easily remember statements that outline our campaign. They can be used for media interviews, they can be used internally talking to volunteers or when presenting about the project. The talking points, as Krista mentioned, we want to be sure that we are all sharing the same consistent message 
and these talking points um, will help us do that. It's also important to note that the talking points are meant for you to um, adapt for you know, your specific interview or need. I don't expect you to go and remember all 10 points in a row. Memorization is not the key. It's just taking these points and putting them um, in a verbiage in a way that you feel comfortable. So I am going to um, hand it off to Amanda now for social media. And then if we have questions about um, public relations or media outreach, I'm happy to answer them uh, at the end. Great, thank you, Kristen. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda McEwen, and I'm a social media strategist with Celtic. Um, and I work very closely with the Play Clean Go team on their social media content, strategy, and advertising. Today, I'm going to run through the features on a few of the main social media platforms, and then I'll jump into uh, some social media strategy tips and finally end on the Play Clean Go Awareness Week social media kit. All right, social media by the numbers. 55% uh, of people who engage with nonprofits on social media end up taking some sort of action. Um, so that's donations, volunteering, or maybe an, attending an event in, in their community. Um, all great reasons for nonprofits to have a social media presence. Social media users spend an average of two hours and 22 minutes per day using social media. People are actively choosing to spend their valuable time on social media, um, so why not have your organization get seen on social media? 4.3 billion active social media users worldwide and growing. Uh, that's 55.1% of the global population. Um, so again, more reason to increase your reach and reach, the, reach those local, statewide, and national um, audiences. And 99% of social media users access via their cell phones. Um, everyone these days has their phone on them just about 24 seven. So why not be the social media post that pops up on their screen when they pick up their phones throughout the day? Also a reminder to make sure that your website is mobile optimized. When people are clicking links um, in social posts that link back to your website, I wanna make sure that they're able to view it on their mobile devices. All right, so now I'm gonna dive into a couple of the main social media platforms. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, um, they also happen to be the main platforms that Play Clean Go is active on. Um, so starting off here with Facebook, um, uh, 2.74 billion monthly users. Um, this essentially makes Facebook the top um, used social profile um, outside of YouTube, which is arguably may or may not be considered social, depending on who you ask. Um, average users click on 11 ads monthly on Facebook. A great reason to have a presence there, to have advertising there. There's definitely a lot of views and traffic to be had. 18% of donors have given through Facebook. A great reason for nonprofits to have a presence here. Some of the features that Facebook um, has that you can benefit from include the Facebook events. These are a great way to bring awareness to upcoming events and volunteer opportunities. Um, once you post your event on Facebook, which is really easy to do, um, it'll not only be seen by your followers, but also by people in your community that might be just browsing events on their um, personal Facebook and see yours uh, nearby in the coming weeks. Facebook groups. Facebook groups can help you reach communities of individuals with similar interests. Um, so say there's a state park or a hiking group in your area. Um, maybe it would be advantageous for you to share your organization's uh, information with that group. Now there are some limitations with organizations and pages on Facebook um, joining groups, but that's on a group by group basis. Um, if for some reason you're not allowed in a certain group based on a page, just have a member of your team join as an individual and act as an advocate um, for your organization within that group. Um, and finally, um, a great um, feature on Facebook is that organizations can raise money and awareness with Facebook's charitable giving tools. So if you haven't heard of this, um, I encourage you to give it a quick Google search. It'll come up with the application um, and just walk you through the steps of how to take advantage of this feature. 
essentially, if you see those like birthday fundraisers on Facebook pages, this is how that's accomplished. Um, and if you're a nonprofit, um, it's a definitely something you want to take advantage of. All right, Instagram. Um, 1.2 billion monthly users. So a little smaller than Facebook, but still obviously a huge number of people using this uh, social media platform. Um, 200 million of their users are visiting a business or organizational profile daily. Um, and 67% of brands are using influencer marketing on Instagram. Um, Instagram is primarily a visual platform. Um, so you always have to make sure you're including an eye-catching image or video. Um, you can use Reels or IGTV to share different types of video. So Reels is a newer feature on Instagram. Um, it's in response to the TikTok craze. Um, so these videos are shorter. Um, they're about 30 seconds each. Then they're a little more dancey and trendy. Um, the IGTV videos are going to be more appropriate for um, an organizational longer length video on Instagram. Um, you can also share content in real time using Instagram stories. Um, you can add these stories, you know, at an event you're attending to show the people in attendance or stuff like that. Um, these stories do disappear within 24 hours, but you do have the option of adding them to your archive and highlighting them on your profile so that they can last for as long as you'd like them to. Stories will need to be posted with your mobile phone, um, and there you can take full advantage of the built-in features like polls, questions, and GIFs um, that are just built in right into the story creation mode. Um, for Play Clean Go, we like to put out polls occasionally, um, asking our followers different questions. Um, we'll also do fun GIFs to just spice it up a little bit and make it more engaging. All right, Twitter. Um, so 353 million users on that platform. So a little smaller, but definitely still a significant following there. Uh, that's 22% of American adults. And Twitter ads reached 5.8% of people globally. So again, we have that audience on a local, uh, statewide, national, and global level. Um, when you're building out your Twitter profile, um, the bio in Twitter is very important. It's not only good for new followers if they stumble across your page, but it also affects your Google search engine optimization. So when people search your keywords, you wanna make sure that your Twitter page pops up and they can learn more about you. Um, on Twitter especially, we wanna make sure you keep it short. Um, there is a 280 character limit. So that's roughly two sentences, give or take. Um, so definitely wanna keep things brief. Anything that's over that is gonna be broken up into different tweets. Um, hashtags. Hashtags are a great tool to um, draw attention to different topics that you're hitting on and also to follow trending topics that are maybe trending for the day. Um, for example, we recently had um, Earth Day. So using the Earth Day hashtag um, helped Play Clean Go enter in the conversation that was happening on a greater level within Twitter. Um, a couple other social platforms. Of course, we have YouTube that is the number one platform as far as traffic. They've got 1 billion hours of video watched every day. LinkedIn is great for B2B marketing. Um, and of course, if you're hiring anyone for your team, it's a great place to be. TikTok definitely skews younger. Um, we're looking at teens and 20s for the most part there. Um, so if that's your audience and you have a plethora of video content um, that's fun and lighthearted, um, that's the place for you. Uh, Snapchat. Mostly disappearing content, fun filters, um, but there is space there for organizations. And Pinterest. Pinterest is retail products for the most part, as well as blog heavy. All right, the social media funnel. Um, so essentially here, you'll see the top of the tunnel, or the funnel, we have our impressions. That's where we're gonna create awareness. Um, it starts with attracting new audiences. So this content is going to be a little more generalized, a little more about Play Clean Go, for example. At the second level of the funnel, that's where we're going to engage those people. Um, we're going to inspire audiences to like, comment, and share. And this helps keep our brand top of mind. At the bottom of the funnel, that's where we're developing loyalty. We're using specific calls to action, um, which leads to conversions and ultimately create loyal customers, 
uh, volunteers, donors um, that can become advocates for your organization. And we wanna make sure that we're hitting all of these topics within our content mix throughout the month so that we're engaging with different types of followers um, and people that see our page. All right, so getting started with social media. First things first, you gotta set up your profiles. Um, so make sure you're filling out all the informational fields and add a profile picture and cover photo. Ideally, you're gonna wanna make your profile photos and your handles consistent across platforms. Um, so, you know, Twitter to Facebook to Instagram, et cetera. If you have the opportunity to keep the same URL or at for your handle, that'd be great. Makes people, um, makes it easier for people to find you. Um, it's important to like and follow your partners um, and strategic connection pages. Um, so those people that you really wanna work with in the future, those people that have um, similar missions, um, inspiring people and engaging with the same audience as you. Um, making sure you monitor those pages daily. Check notifications and respond to mentions, comments, and direct messages. Um, and it's a two-way street on social media. You also wanna go through your newsfeed and like, share, and comment on the people that you follow, um, the, like those strategic connections and partners, for example. And also just post a couple times a week. Make sure you're maintaining your organization's social presence. Uh, you don't wanna go dark for a month because you got too busy. Take the time. It doesn't take too long to just post a couple times a week. All right, now diving into some strategies and best practices for social media. Um, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you establish a voice that aligns with your brand. Um, are you a fun, silly brand that posts memes and fun stuff all day? Or are you a more serious, factual, scientific brand that's going to post uh, more educational content? Are you a mix of both? Um, and that really comes also along with knowing your audience. Um, so for Play Clean Go, for example, our audience is largely recreationist, um, but we also have different partners that we engage with as well on social media. So that really plays into the tone and voice that we take um, in our content mix as well. Um, be authentic, feature real stories, real people and facts. Um, we love to see pictures of people out on the trails, um, wiping their boots at a Play Clean Go boot brush station. Um, that content really resonates people and it shows people the behavior changes that we want to see. Um, and make sure you're inter integrating your social strategy with your overall marketing strategy. Social media is a piece of the pie when it comes to marketing. Um, so it should really uh, go hand in hand and be part of the bigger picture of your advertising, your PR, for example. Be engaging and brief. Social media, we like to say it's snack size or bite size um, rather than a full meal at times. So um, be engaging, but keep it brief. Your post should add value to the reader and always include an image or a video. Um, it's 2021. We need to make sure that those images and the videos are high quality. Um, we don't want to see any pixelated videos or um, images these days. Um, if you need to use a like free stock photo, um, there's sites like Pexels and Unsplash um, where you can grab those. But again, it's best to be authentic and use those real photos that you're taking. Um, and have a clear call to action, whether that's visiting a website, signing up volunteers, um, just make sure that's clear and there's a direct link within your post. Um, respond to comments and messages in a timely manner. Within a couple of hours is ideal. Again, check those pages and notifications daily. Um, it shouldn't take too long to just pop in um, and see what's going on and respond um, within a good time frame. Um, to drive engagement, um, it's a great idea to post interactive content like questions and contents. Um, depending on, you know, what your goals are for social media, um, a contest is a great way to give away product or to give away um, fun incentives for followers. And shares right now are the best way to increase reach and impressions on organic content. Um, with the Facebook algorithm as it currently stands, um, if your content isn't reaching as many people as you'd like, encourage your followers to share that content. Um, Facebook gives priority to content that is shared. And also always include hashtags uh, to reach new audiences. It not only finds people that are looking for that topic, um, but it gets you involved in the greater conversation. 
All right, on to the good stuff, the Play Clean Go Toolkit. Um, so you can visit the awareness tab as Krista demonstrated on playcleango.org. Um, first thing first, um, I encourage you to download the images. We have a couple different styles on there. The wider images are gonna be best for your Twitter posts. The taller images in the middle there are gonna be best for your Facebook and Instagram stories. And then the square images on the right-hand side are gonna be best for your Instagram and Facebook posts. Um, so once you're in there, review the provided talking points to include in your post, or you can use the direct um, copy that we've included in there for you. Um, during the Play Clean Go Awareness Week, we'll have daily topics. If one of those topics in particular resonates with your organization, we definitely encourage you to share content um, on that day. Um, you can also share Play Clean Go posts directly from our pages. Um, so if you're scrolling and you see something you like, um, feel free to share that directly to your page as well. Um, we also have the YouTube channel. We've got a lot of great um, informative and educational videos there that would be great for your followers. Feel free to just share those links as well on your social pages. Um, and during the week, make sure you're using the hashtag PlayCleanGo and hashtag PlayCleanGo week. This will help us to find your posts um, and we can interact back with you by liking, commenting, and sharing. Um, and also be sure to tag us. Um, here are our handles listed for the uh, social pages that we are on. A quick run through on crafting your post. I'll start on the left-hand side here. Um, so again, craft that message in your brand's tone or voice. Uh, add a shortened link to drive traffic to your website, to your blog, whatever you want to accomplish with your post. Um, also make sure that link is shortened. Um, if you are copy and paste your link and it's multiple lines of text, shorten that up. Um, a great resource is bit.ly.com that'll help you keep that brief. Include hashtags, um, play clean go week, hashtag play clean go are our favorites over here. Um, publish your post at optimal times for engagement and reach. Definitely maybe want to avoid posting at 2 a.m. Um, during the weekdays, I definitely advise an optimal time um, is typically around noon, uh, lunchtime, or a little later. So I typically post between like 11.30 a.m. to about 1.30. Um, add emojis when appropriate. If you have a fun brand that um, emojis would add to your voice and tone, um, you can use emojipedia.com to copy and paste those into your content. Um, and using a strong call to action. If you want to drive traffic to your website, make sure you put that in there to, to learn more, visit our website. Um, tag relevant organizations. In this example post, we tag Stop Aquatic Hitchhikers because um, they really um, are a great example of the message we're trying to come across here. And of course, always include a photo or video. Um, make sure it corresponds with your post copy and is consistent with your brand look and tone. All right, and the Play Clean Go events map. Um, Krista kind of pointed this out on the website, um, but you can right now um, add your event to the map um, and you'll receive our volunteer work kit um, that includes 10 uh, biodegradable bags, gloves, boot brushes, uh, face masks, stickers, and a t-shirt for the crew lead. So lots of fun stuff. And all you got to do is add your community event um, to the Play Clean Go map. Um, we can help you spread the word about that event. And that is it. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate uh, being able to come on here and explain more about what we do and all the fun stuff we're working on with Play Clean Go. So I'll turn it back over to you guys. Okay, thank you. Those presentations were outstanding. I really appreciate it. Okay, for our attendees, you have a poll up right now. So about 56% of our voters are definitely, yes, they're doing it. Uh, sharing Play Clean Go Awareness Week content, about 41% um, are still deciding and about 3% will not be participating. So thank you so very much uh, for the information there. And let's see, Belle asked, do you recommend sticking to one recreational activity when you're posting on social media or trying, uh, do you try to communicate multiple recreational activities and multiple groups? Um, how do you recommend going about that, Amanda, since Play Clean Go applies to so many folks? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so some of the recreational activities, I say you can combine hiking, biking, backpacking, you know, those are pretty similar and have the same call to action. Um, but when your call to actions are different, I think it's advisable to split those up um, and include an appropriate photo that's going to really call attention to those specific recreationists and really jump out at them specifically. That's great advice. Thank you. Okay, and I appreciate those of you that are putting putting some of your feedback in the chat for us. Um, and it looks like time is a limiting factor. Uh, just that in June, a lot of folks are out doing field work and they're not sitting at the computer. Um, so that's great feedback to have. Uh, I don't know if any of our speakers have any advice for that, but I know there's template posts somewhat available. So any recommendations for those that are just really short on time um, or for people that I'm also seeing in the chat, uh, just really not experienced with social media. And so uh, if you're not already on there, uh, how, do you, how do you promote an event like this? Any feedback for those folks? Well, I'll start off and then Amanda, you can fill in. <laughs> being, being the social media queen, um, I know I too, when I did field work, didn't have the opportunity. So what I would do is rely on Play Clean Go with uh, some pre-created content, which we do have available um, and the Awareness Week toolkit. And then I would just pair it with one of the images that they offered. Um, one another thing that I would do is just take, um, I think it would be like 30 minutes at the end of the day, I would actually pre-schedule one or two posts to go out during the week. Um, and I would have to just predetermine what I wanted to get across. And that is something that um, Facebook allowed you to do. I was not on Twitter until I started here with Play Clean Go. So I'm sure Amanda has like way more information than I can share, but. Yeah, if you have the time to schedule out some posts for the week, that's always a great way to do it. Um, like Krista mentioned, you can do that right within Facebook by scheduling it out in advance. Um, and with the toolkit we've provided you, you know, word for word, you can just copy and paste and post that right in there. Um, it should be fairly quick to get the word out. Um, and again, you can just go onto the Play Clean Go pages and click that share button. Um, that's super quick um, and a great way to share information with your followers as well. Thank yeah, you. I would say... I'm going to jump in for PR. I know that this is more of a social question, but I would say the same for using the toolkit for the press release, especially for Play Clean Go Awareness Week. The, you know, even though I said, um, if you want to go in depth and create a really personalized media list um, with, you know, exact context, that's great. If you have the time to update the press release and fill in the blanks and just want to send it out to all the newsrooms of your local TV stations, that is something that would take 15 minutes to kind of gather those contacts online and send it out, um, especially if you're going to have an event um, or something upcoming that you want to promote. I would definitely um, recommend grabbing that template. And really, it's, it's, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to share that message. Thank you. And there's a, there's a good comment in the chat, too, that a lot of organizations, um, especially governments, you may have a, a marketing department, you may have a PR department, you may have a, somebody even designated to do social media. And so if you could just connect with those people and give them the resources, maybe they can help you and take some of that burden off of you um, if you're out in the field or uh, that's just not something you're really comfortable with. So maybe check in with some other folks in your organization or if you have partners that you work with, maybe just sharing that these resources are available to your partners, maybe they can help, help out too. Um, and then just a point of clarification for Amanda, um, when you're scheduling posts, can you do that from your personal profile or do you have to have a business page or a group in order to be scheduling posts? Um, either. So if you're on your professional page, you'll be able to schedule those out there um, or as an individual, just to make it easier on yourself, you can do that as well. Cool. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. Um, I have a question here in the Q&A. Do you have some simple tips when you're shooting videos on your phone? Any, any good video tips? Yeah, so I was just when you're shooting video on your phone, um, just make sure what your goals are with that video and where you're going to end up posting it. Um, so if you're going to end up posting it on YouTube or on your Facebook posts, 
um, make sure you're shooting horizontally. Um, if you're posting to Instagram stories, IGTV, or something that's gonna be mobile optimized, you're gonna wanna shoot up and down vertically. Um, check your lighting and sound. Um, just you know, be aware of your surroundings while you're filming. Um, just do whatever you can to just kind of create a safe space so when no one's walking through or you know, think bark, dogs barking in the background. Um, but yeah, those are some just some quick tips. Yeah, the background. Being aware of your background is always interesting. I'm I'm on the top of the mountain today. <laughs> um, okay, another question for stories. Uh, does content have to be uploaded beforehand and posted from your phone? Is there a way to schedule your stories? There's not a great way to schedule stories. Um, there are a couple paid third-party platforms that you can work with for stories. They're not great. Um, it eliminates the use of like the polls, the questions, the features that Instagram and Facebook um, have integrated into their platform. Um, so I would advise not to schedule them in advance. Um, again, you'd have to pay for a third party uh, platform. It's much easier to just kind of do it as you go um, and shoot content or post content that's live um, or you know, current and happening now at an event or um, celebrating an occasion, that kind of a thing. Um, because again, it does disappear within 24 hours. So um, long story short, not a great way to pre-post stories, unfortunately. Okay, thank you for that. You did give me an idea though. I mean, because stories is kind of intended to be more, you know, behind the scenes of you know, your life. And so if you're in the field and you don't have time to, um, you know, schedule your posts, go into your stories and take a selfie and just, you know, use that, the hashtag and tag the Play Clean Go at Play Clean Go and, and use the hashtag for Play Clean Go Awareness Week um, and just post a picture of you in the field actually doing invasive species management. And that would be super awesome. And we would love that. So, um, and, and feel free to do that for Nisa uh, as well. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, I think those are all the questions in the Q&A and we are just about out of time. This was really outstanding. Uh, just two weeks from right now, we'll be in the middle of uh, National Invasive Species Awareness Week. Um, and so check that out. Of course, Play Clean Go Awareness Week. I hope that um, you get to participate and even get some of those great prizes that are, are going out for, uh, for events. Uh, we do monthly webinars the third Wednesday of every month. Uh, this month, it'll be a part of uh, NISA, but please join us in June for Healthy Trees, Healthy Cities. And then in July, Best Management Practices for Pesticide Applications. And our webinars are scheduled out through the end of the year. So if you go to uh, nasma.org to our webinar page, you can see all the webinars each month for the rest of the year. So those three websites on the bottom of your screen, please visit um, and bookmark them and reach out to any of us uh, if you have any questions about anything we do at NASMA or if there's any way that we can support you. Um, that's our mission here. And so we're so glad that you were able to be with us for this special event. Again, thanks to our speakers. I hope you all have an awesome rest of your day and uh, we will see you very soon. So thank you so much.